I'm talking to somebody here today. Oh, now it's time to go deep. In this year, the only thing I want you to fight is something worth fighting for. What am I talking about? I'm talking about patterns. I'm talking about patterns. I'm talking about every time you get in an argument, you're thinking about divorce because that's what you... Lord, help me in this place. See, we, most of us, we didn't get divorced because we were upset. We got divorced because that was the family pattern. Because if the pattern was you stay, you would have... Patterns. 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 You eat bacon, that's a pattern. Now you're trying to break the pattern, talking about you a vegan, still eating steak. Let me tell you something. I'm so tired of you part-time vegans, I don't know what to do. Either you're going to be one or you ain't going to be one. I'm a vegan, but I eat. No, no. Everything after but is you, ain't it? I'm a pescatarian that eats chicken sometimes, huh? This woman is not guilty by reason of insanity. That's why Jesus didn't put her to death, because she was under the control of a demon. She's under the control of a demon. Now, listen, at verse 2 and 3 says that, that when Jesus was in the temple teaching them and, and, and they interrupted him. Remember, he's up there teaching. All right, today we're going to talk about the law, the ten laws. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, Jesus, since we're on the subject of adultery, we had found this woman caught in the very act of adultery. Now, my question for you is, if Jesus is in the temple and they have a woman caught in the act of adultery, in the temple with her, is this an accident or is this a sting operation? Yeah, they done planned this already. So they say, now, the reason why they do this is because if Jesus does stone her to death, then he messes up his reputation. If he does not, then he breaks the law. So they are actually not after her. They are actually after him. Can I tell you something in this place today? That the devil will come after everything in your life because he's actually trying to get to you. But I want to tell you, no weapon formed against you. Oh, I can't get no church in here today. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Touch your neighbor and say, it won't work. It won't work. If you got a pen, write this down. Jesus says he's in the temple. He's teaching. They interrupted him while he was teaching. Jesus, we caught this woman in the act of adultery. Jesus is teaching, and they interrupted the class. Can I give you the definition of a hater? The definition of a hater. Now remember, Jesus is teaching. They interrupt his class to try to teach him. The definition of a hater is somebody who's teaching when they should be learning. That's what you need to understand about the people who are always hating on you. What they sing, what they're trying to teach you, they should actually be learning from you. That, that's all a hater is. A hater is a confused friend. It's somebody who really admires you. But they can't admit they admire you, so they have to turn it Because if I wasn't worth anything, why am I worth your attention? All of your haters are people who try to teach you who don't have the courage to learn from you. While you hating on me, I could teach you how to dress. Because you look a mess. While you hating on me, I could teach you how to raise your children because yours are bad. If, if, you, if, if you would stop looking at me as, as, a, as a person who doesn't have anything to offer and admit the fact that you like what I have to offer.
Never trust anybody who wants to teach when they should be learning. <laughs> Have you ever been around somebody, the moment you start telling them what God did for you, they got to interrupt you with their story. Let me tell you what God did for me, and, and for me too, because let me tell you, you better get away, they jealous. Real friends let you have your moment. It's your moment. It's your time. We caught her in the act of adultery. Jesus says, okay, since y'all want to bring her sin up, y'all forgot I'm Jesus and I know everything. And I know that y'all left part of John chapter 8 out. So Jesus bends down in the ground and finishes the chapter. And the Bible says he begins to write the names of the men who are at the crime scene. See, they ain't never going to get away. They can leave themselves out, but Jesus is going to write them in. Jesus starts to write their name, and next to their name, he writes their sin. And the Bible says, that this is what they did with their rock when they seen their name and their sin. They said, I can't wait until the day that the church will drop the rocks. I can't wait until y'all drop your rocks. I'm going to stay right here. Touch your name and say, drop your rock. You ain't got nothing to judge me on. We are both messed up. We are all toe up. We all have sin. The church has to drop its rocks. The Bible says from the eldest to the youngest. So the old fellas drop their rock first. The senior statesmen, all the way down to the rookies, everybody dropped their rocks. You know why? Because when you see your sin, isn't it amazing when I'm preaching on Sunday, sometimes, Carla, I'm preaching, and, and when I'm talking about stuff people don't do, they going crazy. But when I get on their sin, I'll be preaching, talking about, oh, you, know, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. And they'd be like, yeah, and don't get drunk. Yeah, and don't do that. And, and you shouldn't be living with people you ain't married with. And this is, this, is, this is what's messing up Christianity is because no matter what the Bible says, now we go to what we feel. Yeah, but it's better to just have uh, one income and, 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 and it don't make sense if we're going to be over each other's house uh, every day anyway for us to both be paying rent. So now we justify. And what's wrong with the church now? Ain't no such thing as sin no more. Ain't no sin. You just do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. The Lord know your heart. You ain't got to get better. You just can keep doing whatever you want to do, and you can pray. But you got to understand that you ain't going to have no power. At some point in time, you're going to have to turn over a new leaf. At some point in time, old things are going to have to pass away. And at some point in time, all things are going to become new. And by the way, you know why the people ain't shouting today? Because they want a church that won't rebuke them. You want a church where there is no rebuke, there is no reproof. A person just comes to church to tell you, God loves you. Let me tell you, God ain't no Santa Claus. He's a redeemer. Some of those habits you're going to have to drop. And that might mean dropping some people because some people are your habits. For those of you on, online, let me tell you, only about 20% of the room is standing up right now. 80% of them done checked all the way out. I'm talking to you now. This is a problem. We can't get better because we keep on erasing parts of the story. We keep coming to church and we keep showing up like that part of our life didn't happen. And then you want to have a mentoring program, but you don't want to be honest. Now you got five mentees, but you're only telling them about the part where you made money. Can you tell them about the trap house? Can, can you tell them about the weed that, that was in your glove compartment when you got pulled over? Can you tell them about how many partners you wish you would not have been with? Can you tell them about your STD? Come and holler at your boy. Can you tell them about the time you got so drunk that you don't know how you got home? And I'm not talking about last week, I'm talking about last year. <laughs> 